You've been gone for two weeks, so the place is a mess. You do the housework, the washing, you cook the meals. That's Alice. You look after her. Homework, bath, all that crap. Got it? Right away, Todd. Hi, my name is David Cage. I'm the writer and director of Detroit Becomes Human. We're here in Paris, and as we just introduced this new playable scene from Detroit featuring this character called Kara, we thought it was a great opportunity to revisit the origin of this character uh, in this short video that we created in 2012. Uh, let's have a look. So it's been years since I haven't watched this uh, again. I tend not to go back to my previous work. When it's done, it's done, but it's uh, always a great pleasure to watch it again. Um, initially, this piece was just a tech demo. I mean, it's never been something we intended to become a game. Um, it was a tech demo that I wrote very quickly because we wanted to see what kind of emotions would come across in our brand new real-time 3D engine that was on, running in real time on PlayStation 3. So um, I wrote very quickly the script, was not sure what I was doing exactly, just wanted to go through many different emotions in, in four or five minutes. So we started by casting this young actress called Valerie Curry. And uh, I probably met dozens of actresses in, in LA, uh, but when Valerie came in the room for the first time, I thought this, this woman has something, something special. I just hope that she's also a great actress. And actually she delivered the most impressive um, performance um, I've seen. Uh, and it's a very difficult piece because it's, it's from going from being a robot to being a, to, to being a human being, basically, and having emotions and being able to cry and all these things. Very challenging script, very difficult. And Valerie did an amazing, amazing job. So all these things with the robotic arms that you see moving around was another major challenge we had. My God, it was really um, something difficult because actually we wanted the actress to be aware of the presence of these robotic arms and so know where they were and be able to look at them and maybe push them back at some point as we will see. So basically we had like three people on set faking the arms and just, you know, with, with this very precise choreography, just making sure that they were moving the right way at the right moment so she could react and push them back and look at them at the right moment in the right timing. So all this is perfectly choreographed and uh, it was a real nightmare to make and I think the people who did it still remember it today. So one of the challenges we had was to play with, with this character, make her look human but at the same time look like an android. And one of the first questions that we had was how are we going to make her believable human so people care for her and not just say oh it's a robot I don't care I don't share emotions I don't feel any empathy and actually the performance of Valerie Curry answered that question for us because a performance was so moving that it became very natural and it came very easily we just uh, heard her singing in Japanese so in order to do this and before that she spoke French uh, and German, I think, if I remember well. Of course, it's not Valerie. <laughs> she has a lot of talents, but not. she doesn't speak so many languages. So we had to work with a Japanese singer who just did this bit and with a French uh, actress and a German actress to do the, the different languages. Uh, and uh, at the end, we put everything, of course, on Valerie's face. So it looks like it's Kara speaking different languages. So uh, that was uh, a real choreography, a lot of work, and talking to the operator was really something important. This is the moment where she realizes that she's going to be disassembled, what will happen to her. So a very, uh, very moving, very important moment in the story. Working on the eyes, working on performance capture, working on the skin. So of course all these technologies have evolved a lot since then, so it's uh, I'm still very pri pri proud of it, but at the same time, if you look at Detroit today and, and how we recreated the character of um, Kara, I think she looks much better today. Um, it's a different generation, different engine. And this is the moment where she gets disassembled. So still this choreography with all the robotic arms and she had to be lift up. And this is when she pushes all the uh, robotic arms. All, all this happened for real on the set. 
So when we worked on the design of this Android, we wanted to um, avoid having something that would be purely robotic because we, we felt it would feel weird to have someone made of iron and, and just, you know, uh, electric wires. So we wanted to create a structure, an anatomy that would pretty much look like a human being. So we created this heart beating in the chest and this blue blood that would go through her veins so we could have this you know this feeling of empathy she looks human and uh, she also had a heart beating and, and, and blood in her veins that was something important to us and I think it plays an interesting role an interesting part in the impact that the piece has and again that was a huge challenge to create a character and, and so show how she's assembled on screen looks like a human and then disassembled again and then reassembled it was a challenge on a technical point of view with a real-time 3D engine, but it's, it was also a challenge in matter of directing because we wanted to find the right pacing. We, we didn't want the, 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 the player, to, the, the user, to see it, to, to find it boring. And it's, again, it's all in the performance of the actress that it, it came to life. That's the moment where the operator changes his mind and decides to let her go. Playing with lens flares here on PlayStation 3. Last moment of fear. And she realizes that now she's free. And we wonder where she goes, and actually, she goes in a box, and we realize that there are many models like her, but we also understand that she's very unique and very different. And of course, when she leaves the factory like this, you, we really wondered what will happen to her from this point. Where does she go? Where, where is this factory? Where is it in the world? What will happen to her? And this is the story that we try to tell in Detroit Become Human. Well, it was great watching this again after all these years, but uh, Kara's journey now continues and it's in Detroit Become Human on PlayStation 4. My name is Kara. I am one of them. This is our story. for two weeks, so the place is a mess. You do the housework, the washing, you cook the meals. That's Alice. You look after her. Homework, bath, all that crap. Got it? Right away, Todd. Aren't you going to school today? I'm sure we used to be friends before I was reset. Maybe we can be friends again. You shouldn't mess around with my stuff. It makes me nervous. I'm sorry, Todd. What are you looking at? Maybe you think this is easy. Maybe you think it's my fault your fucking mother took off. Fucking whore walked out on me for a fucking account. Come back here. You stay there. Don't you dare fucking move. Alice! Daddy's very mad. This is all your fault! <laughs> 